Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel and to another unboxing video. So this one is a little bit later than planned thanks to Royal Mail, but today it's the turn of the Deimos Pattern Predator Battle Tank for Horus Heresy. So we kind of knew this one was coming, we've seen the Rhino already and based on that kit everybody correctly assumed that we'd be getting a Predator and sure enough we did. So what we'll do in this video is we'll take a quick look at the sprues and the instructions as normal and then we'll discuss what options we've got for magnetising as well which I'll cover in a separate video. So as usual we've got that awesome bit of Horus Heresy artwork on the front here, much better than the 40k stuff in terms of packaging in my opinion great piece of art on the front and then turning it over of course we've got that studio scheme of the sons of horus predator battle tank with the main predator cannon there and then we've got the graviton cannon the last cannon and the volkite macro sacker as well and then sponsons we've got heavy flamer volkites and last cannon and we'll talk about the sponsons in a minute as well because uh, we've seen that spree before opening it up as usual with these kits we've got the Loyalist logo on this tab and if you were to open the box from the other side you've got the Traitor logo on there. So nice little touch that's been replicated across all the packaging and as you can see the first sprue that we're going to see is one that we've seen before. So we get the tank accessory sprue, I'll just move that out of the way so you can see the sprues properly. So we've seen this sprue already, it's come in every kit so far, so the Spartan, the Sakara and the Kratos and I don't think anyone's going to complain about getting more of these kits because not only do we get that Mark II Space Marine on there as well, we've got tons of hatch options as well so if you wanted to magnetise your hatches or use some of the other weapons or some of the uh, bits that you get in the kit, you get another one of these sprues so that's a good thing, not going to complain about that. The next sprue that we're going to see is the Sponson sprue. So. This is not new to this kit, we've seen this kit or they've seen this sprue already I should say. It came with the Kratos and also with the Sakaran. So I've got my sprue from the Sakaran here and it's identical, it's the same sprue. So in terms of magnetizing sponsons, you can do that by all means. Some people have, and some people have also uh, used these pins as drop-in pins to hold the weapons in place by putting a bit of plastic glue or paint on the pins just for the friction to hold them in. But I don't think I'm going to bother with that because I've got the sprue for the Sakaran and this one and also a Kratos sprue as well. What I'll probably do is just build a Volkite, Heavy Bolter and maybe Last Cannons and then just switch between the kits as well because I might be getting another Predator anyway. So we've seen the sprue before as I said but not a problem that we're getting another one. And I think it's great that they're future proofing the kits by putting sprues across different kits where it's minimising the cost and hopefully keeping the cost down for the consumers as well which is us. Next sprue is one that's unique to this kit and it's the main weapon sprue for the Predator. So as I just said everything is on the one sprue here so again future proofing the kit. If we were going to get in a, a Predator with different weapon options all I've got to do is change this sprue and give us a sprue with the other weapon options that are missing. So one of the things that did worry me in terms of changing the weapons out is I thought we'd only get one of these cowls but thankfully we've got two. So there's four weapons and we've got four cowls so that's really good. So in terms of magnetising it, we've got two of those and then we just need to figure out how we're going to do that. Uh, one thing to note though is the side sections, uh, sorry, the back bins for the turret were supposed to be like ammo stowage bins or something. One half of it is shared across the turret options, whereas the other half is different. So I'll show you that in the instructions in a minute. But there is the turret sprue, uh, the main weapons for the turret. And as I said, they're probably going to change this sprue out uh, in a future kit. The next sprue is another one that is unique to the Predator kit. So on the Rhino, we've got the top plate with the uh, rectangular section for the hatches and the top hatches, and the, we've got the side sections for the side doors as well. Whereas on this one, we've got side plates where the sponsons will mount, we've got the turret, and we've got that front plate as well that's unique to the Predator. So what I might do with this one is glue a piece of sprue underneath here as I have with some of my other kits, and then I can maybe put a, a gunner or a commander on there. But um, as I said in my Sakaran video, I don't really like things popping out of the top of the turrets on the tanks, especially the Sakaran, because it's meant to be like a sleek, fast tank, and it kind of takes away from the look of it a little bit. Maybe it's not too bad with the Predator, which you'll see in the instructions in a minute. Uh, if I just bring in my Rhino, what I have done, as I said, a bit of sprue underneath the turret with a magnet on, and I've got a magnet on the underside of the hatches there, so these are magnetised. And also, if I bring in my Commander from the Spartan, again, that's got a magnet on the bottom. I can just pop it in there, magnetise. So if I wanted to do that for the top of the Predator, I could swap that out as well. So that's an option. Don't know whether I'll do it for this kit, but um, I've definitely done it for the Spartan and the Rhino, and I like having the, those different options there. So anyway, that's the other sprue for the Predator. And then the last sprue that we've got in the kit is one we've seen already. This is the Rhino sprue. 
So we've got the sides of the chassis and the other side plates with that gap in the middle where if it was your Rhino, you'd have that section for the side doors in there. But with the Predator, of course, we've got that plate where the sponsons will mount as well. So everything for the actual Rhino chassis itself on this sprue. And then you've got your Predator sprue over here. So if there was future kits, on based on the rhino chassis again we'd have this sprue in the box but then different sprues going forward and of course in the kit we get a transfer sheet with imperial fists and sons of horus as we've got in all the other previous kits so nothing too special there but if you collect imperial fists or sons of horus great stuff not 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 going to complain about getting more of those and of course the instructions so starting off building it is pretty much the same as the rhino but you've got that side plate there for the sponsors rather than the side doors and then it's putting the back ramp and the floor plate in there. One thing I will say from building the Rhino is all these kits, the way they're designed, there's pretty much zero tolerance. So in here, where these pegs go in the side of the hull, it is extremely tight. So at the very least, I would say, get rid of the mold lines on these pegs. But I would also recommend probably drilling out that hole a little bit or just filing it out a little bit because if you want that ramp to be opening and closing on your kit and you're gonna paint the inside and what have you, that will be extremely tight on my rhino i ended up with stress marks on the plastic because it was so tight that i couldn't move it properly so i had to pull it apart before the glue had dried and just widen the holes a little bit now thankfully i was gluing the hat shut so it didn't really matter but just something to bear in mind when you're building it these tolerances here are extremely extremely tight so just be careful and then got that uh, back plate there if you wanted to paint the interior you've got that bit of detail on there as normal and then top section going on exhaust and the uh, front plate for the predator and the, the lights there and then we're on to our turret options so four weapons in the kit the predator cannon the gravis last cannon the volkite and the graviton cannon so in terms of magnetizing this kit we've got this piece here where all the weapons are attached and you can see there's a little bit of a raised section there now whether that's the part where i'm going to add magnets or not i don't know i just need to investigate it a little bit and you can see it says don't glue there but you glue the rest of the ring on now i think that's to give it a little bit of movement so you've got some elevation on the main weapon so that's another thing to bear in mind when magnetizing it as well so what i might do is maybe get some magnets on this section and then put something else in the turret weapons like a bolt or something that'll give me uh, something for the magnets to connect to but i don't have to mess about worrying about polarity and things like that now the other thing i mentioned is these bins for the turret this section is the same and shared across all the weapons but this section here is different depending on the weapon that you choose now if you're not too bothered just build this one and then you can have that across all the weapons and just magnetize at the front but if you're a stickler for detail and a lot of people are especially with it being horus heresy this one is going to be different depending on which kit you choose so as you can see there that's different for the Volkai, and again for the Graviton Cannon there's a different one. So I might figure out how to put a magnet there and just have these two magnetized as well. So that's another option to consider when magnetizing. But what I want to do when I make sure when I magnetize it is ensure that the weapons are flush. Because I think one of the key things about magnetizing, for me anyway, is it shouldn't look like it's magnetized. It should look like it's glued, but then you've got that interchangeability with your magnets, but it should look glued. There are some videos out there where people have magnetized this and the weapons there's a massive gap between the weapon and the turret and they're a little bit floppy and you can't move them up and down and it just looks a bit naff um, so i just want to try and get it right and then i'll do a video showing how to do it if i can figure it out so you guys can do it as well hopefully um, as i said about the sponsons you've got the various sponson options there and we've seen these bits before and these pins a lot of people just use them as dropping pins put a bit of plastic cement or maybe some paint on these pins and they will hold the weapon in place with friction and then you've got the option of swapping them out but i'm probably just going to build a few different options because i've got three of these sprues now and then i'll just swap them between the kits but by all means if you want to do that uh, go for it there's plenty of people that have done it so far and it's working great so that's another thing to do lastly it's turret on and the sponsors on and then you've got the options for adding your tank accessory stuff so bolters you can put on top of the turret which i think looks a little bit weird myself missile launcher doesn't look too bad or you've got the option of a gunner with a pintle mounted weapon or there's also an option for a commander as well so the commander doesn't look too bad actually with the binoculars but it's not exactly a massive turret so uh, a bit of suspension of disbelief there to uh, a suspension of belief i should say to get the commander in the turret but uh, we'll see i might just glue the turret down and then of course we've got some other options in the kit 
hunter killer missile smoke launchers and search light as well so basically that is it for the new plastic predator for horus heresy um as i said it's really good that they're future proofing these kits we've got that rhino chassis there with all the bits and bats on it and then we've just got two new sprues that is all for this kit really you've got the top section of the predator there and then we've got this turret frame here with the various weapon options on which they could swap out and then the tank accessory sprue and the, the uh, sponson sprue is exactly the same so anyway that's it i've gone on for long enough magnetizing i'll figure it out and i'll get a video done as soon as i can so hopefully that should be done by the end of the week uh, hope to see you in that video if you enjoyed this one remember to give it a thumbs up let me know you've enjoyed it and if you didn't like it just give it a thumbs down or leave me a comment let me know why you didn't like it if you're not subscribed to the channel please consider subscribing because there's plenty more on the way i've got the leagues of Votan army set coming this weekend as well so i'll definitely be doing an unboxing video for that as well so i hope to see you for that one as well all that's left to say is thank you very much for watching as always i do appreciate it and i'll see you in the next video cheers